Well, good evening, London. Welcome to Piers Morgan on Censor. The allegations made against Russell Brand are shocking. And there is no question that the investigative journalism behind them from the Sunday Times and Channel 4's Dispatches programme was both meticulous and powerful. Brand has been accused of rape, sexual assault and emotional abuse by four women when he's at the height of his fame. He's also accused of grooming a 16-year-old girl who says she was taken from school to his home in a car paid for by the BBC. He's grabbing at my my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me and he won't get off. He grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed and he was naked at this point and he held me down and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, f me. I was like, oh my God, he raped me. So a BBC chauffeur-driven car picked you up at the age of 16 to take you to Russell Brown's house? Yes. He told me that his management had told him, his agent, not to be seen out and about. His management had advised him not to be seen out and about with a 16-year-old? Yeah, because they said it wasn't a good look for him and for his career. Well, these are obviously horrifying claims. And if they're all true, then Brand will deserve every punishment meted out to him. But at this stage, they remain claims. And Russell Brand has vehemently denied them. Whatever you think of him, he's entitled to due process. Every bit as much as his accusers deserve to be taken seriously. These are grave criminal accusations which now demand a police investigation to determine if they meet the legal bar for charges, prosecution and a possible trial. But some of the language we're seeing online, including from many journalists, describing the accusers as victims and survivors implies that Brand's already been convicted of a crime when he hasn't. The court of public opinion is not an actual court, but it behaves like one, and that's inherently dangerous, as we saw with the likes of Sir Cliff Richard, who was wrongly accused of sexual assault, had his exemplary public reputation destroyed in the process until he won a legal action against the BBC and cleared his name. The consequences of the accusations are already apparent. Brand's book deal's been shelved, his tour has been postponed, his management team has dropped him. Clips like this about him are going viral. Lady. You have to move out of your chair and... Uh, Catherine she... is welcome to no, see me. No, she's not. It's not. No, don't do it. Trust me, don't do it. You did say at the start of the year that you were considering attempting celibacy. Is that something that you have continued with? What time do you finish work? <laughs> if you were ever so confused, Fifi Box, pop yourself down on my knee and see if we can't get you pregnant. Mmm, <laughs> Fifi Box. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh my God, he's kissing me. <laughs> All right, Liz, we goodbye. Were. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful thing. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> That's awful. All right, that's okay. <laughs> Russell, how can I do your bra just like this? <laughs> well, by today's stricter moral code after the Me Too movement and Time's Up campaign, it's easy to watch all that and be appalled by Russell Brand's apparent immorality. This is not a referendum on his moral compass. By his own regular admission, he was an outrageously promiscuous sex addict who reveled in his incessant womanising. Brand openly boasted about it. He was saluted for it by many in the media. It didn't stop BBC Newsnight using him as a political Svengali. It didn't stop The Guardian giving him top billing on stage with Owen Jones and publishing his column for many years. It didn't stop Ed Miliband seeking his endorsement for Prime Minister. It didn't stop the New States from making him a guest editor, nor Prospect magazine naming him the fourth most influential thinker in the world. Channel 4, the BBC and a slew of media executives will have serious questions to answer if it turns out that Russell Brand has indeed been the ruthless predatory criminal that these new allegations suggest. So will all those righteous publications who made him a demigod? But what we cannot do is preemptively convict a man of heinous crimes like this without any legal due process to establish the cold, hard facts. Joining me to discuss all this is comedian Samantha Presti, political journalist Ava Santina, and talk TV contributor Esther Cracker. All right. Uh, I've seen both of you two all over social media since this story broke. So let me start with you, Esther. You've been pretty strong. You said there's nothing stunning and brave about choosing to sit down with a journalist instead of going to the police. And someone who does that is definitely not interested in justice only public sympathy. Yeah. I was quite shocked when I read that. Oh, yes. Because the thing is, ultimately, what are the public supposed to do? We cannot have this man hung, drawn and courted. We are not a court. We are not... We, we the, You know, the legal process is invested in us. If these claims, which are 
outrageous and they sound very serious, obviously you should go to the police. And it's not just about these victims, but it's also pr protecting other women as well. I hate this, uh, this binary where we have that, oh, we're supposed to believe all women, we're, women are strong and empowered. But on the other hand, you know, when you don't go to the police, you get to have it both ways where you can have someone not convicted in a court, but you can have them convicted in a court. But what about the argument the that only 1% of rape cases lead to conviction. That's, that's, that's more of a reason to try and improve the system. I don't well, it believe... might be more of a reason why a lot of women choose actually a different avenue but you can't to get justice. justice and, they, and they may, I mentioned the two campaigns, Me Too and Time's Up. Of course, you know, it was down to journalists that people like Harvey Weinstein ended up in prison. Yeah, but they the, were the ones that here, investigated it. This is the difference between a journalist and a, a, a lawyer or someone who works in the criminal mm. um, justice system. They are looking for facts. A, a, a journalist is looking... No, 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 I'm sorry. No, there, there have been many... Uh, sorry, there have been many journalists who have failed at their job because they're looking for a story, they're looking for a scoop. At the end of the day, I have far more trust in the legal system, as slow and clunky as it may be, and in legal professionals than I do in a journalist that's looking for their latest... All right, Ava, I mean, I read the... I read, the, you know, I think with all these things, the best thing to do is sit down and read every word, and then I watched the whole of Dispatches. And I thought it was extremely thorough journalism, meticulous, obviously very carefully legaled, I felt, as a former newspaper editor myself. I know how complicated these things can be. Uh, so I thought that from a journalistic point of view, there wasn't much more they could have done to present the cases of four different women, none of whom apparently knew each other, uh, all making very serious allegations. But my issue with the way it's played out on social media when people talk regularly on Twitter or whatever about victims and survivors in relation to these women, at the moment, they're accusers. They're not actually, at the moment, established to be victims and survivors until or if there is some kind of criminal action. Am I wrong? OK, well, park the Russell Brand thing. Just to give you an example that is not connected to that at all, I'll ask you about Jimmy Savile. Mm. We've all made up our mind about Jimmy Savile. He was never convicted in a court. Should we all change our minds now? I think the court of public opinion has been quite fair. Well, he, well, he died. There. But, but he was never tried in a court. And, I'm sorry, organi organisations... But, he, but he, would have, he would have been. And, and organisations admitted, admitted to actually covering up his crimes. I'm sorry, there, have been, no, there, there just... has been corroborating evidence there. The issue here is... I'm sorry, you, you can't make that argument. The issue here is the, this is an episode of He Said, She Said. If he's denied it and we can't do anything about it, what exactly are we your, supposed to do? I think your opinion sucks on this. It's not it about an opinion. Does. No, sorry. I'm sorry. No, but I agree that. No. Okay. Well, I, I'm sure you would. Look, I think, you know, Russell Brand is an extremely litigious individual. Okay, libel law in the UK means that it is far easier to basically say, oh, this newspaper has hurt my feelings mm. and therefore I can sue you. Then you have to provide a wealth of evidence. It'll be far more strict One side and of evidence. far more wealth of evidence than actually even the court what about his to provide. But are you comfortable with the way the court of public opinion has already convicted them in many cases? Uh, do, do you know, I think... I mean, I'm as... Un let me put it another way. I'm as uncomfortable with that as I am with all the people trying to claim there's some vast conspiracy theory mm. and he's being taken out by mainstream media mm. because of some thing to do with his YouTube channel. I think that's complete nonsense, My right? So I, I, have a, I have a problem with both extremities here. Mm. But I do think there's a real danger. We saw it with Cliff Richard. We saw it with this young man I interviewed uh, a few months ago who was a victim of a total fantasist who ended up doing two months on remand, had rapists daubed all over his, his home wall, all completely the result of a fantasy. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case here. They might all be absolutely telling the truth. It's certainly very compelling and convincing, I thought, the reporting. But they remain allegations. Yeah. He's entitled Which to defend himself. Which is what every single newspaper and broadcaster has reported. They said they are accusations and allegations. And there was no business, does any woman have, coming out now to say that those women should not be believed. Instead, we should all... Well, hang on. Well, no, he, again, I have a problem. I, no, no. Again, I have a big problem with what you just said. When you say automatically believed, mm -hmm. right, I have a problem with that. I think all accusers who make allegations this serious, they should be listened to, taken seriously... By the police. ..and then their claims should be properly investigated by law enforcement, mm -hmm. right? That's the only way to deal with criminal allegations. The moment you have a presumption that everyone who makes claims like this has to be believed, you end up with problems like... Do you remember the, the fantasist who had all the politicians? Right? For, every, uh, you know, Spacey. for uh, every example that you can give, there will be 100,000 women who have had a sexual assault claim that has been bitched that, off by the police. Uh, that is also wrong, but that doesn't change my point, which is you can't automatically believe accusers. Mm -hmm. You have to investigate them. So I the moment think, you use that that's... language, I, you lose me a bit, because I'm like, hang on, hang on. But what if there's a, a young girl I, I at home the today I think who the problem that and then they No, no, Lester, no, no the young, the young girl at home who, who wants to make an allegation like this, you say, you will be respected, 
you'll be listened to, you will have your full this story is, taken then that's down. Fine. You will have all that, right? What you won't be is automatically believed. Mm -hmm. Because if the moment you do that, you allow what happened with this fantasist, with this poor boy, you know, this 18 year old boy, life ruined by complete fantasies, these things will happen yeah. if you have a presumption of that. Now, let me bring in you, uh, Samantha, if I may. You, you had a brief sort of, well, not, not really a romance with Russell, but you had a something with him, right? Yeah, we had a little encounter back in 2006. I went to his flat, we had a little bit of a fumble, we got to crunch point, and I'm like, no. And, and you're, you're a comedian. Yeah, and uh, I wasn't back then, I was a model and a dancer. And, um, yeah, so he was fine with me. He was really polite and I felt safe with him, so... And when you said you didn't want to go any further, how, how was he then? He was fine. He, he, there was no problem at all. Um, everything that happened was consensual. So when I'm reading these stories, it, it doesn't represent my experience. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, a rapist, an alleged rapist, would, would treat the same women, all women the same way, but... That's not my only experience of Russell Brand. I but it, it said on the comedy circuit this was widely known. Yeah. No, I've known Russell Brand, I don't know, 20 years probably. I've interviewed him for my Life Story show. I've interviewed him for GQ. I've interviewed him many, many times, Russell Brand. I was actually texting with him a few weeks ago about potentially doing an interview, right? So I've known him yeah. a long time. And I, I was shocked when I read this because I've heard lots of rumours about lots of people over the years, but actually most of it has turned out to be nonsense. Yeah. Here, to read it actually laid out was shocking. If it is true, it's shocking behaviour. It, this is why it jars so much with me, because I've been in the comedy world since 2014, and then in 2015, I was very um, involved in a political campaign that Russell Brand was leading, and mm. he was helping women um, keep their social homes. So if And you never heard that any rumours? Nobody said to me, oh, be careful around Russell Brand. I drove a van that had the trues on the side, it advertised his cafe. Mm. He was doing a lot of good work. So I got to know him as an activist and a good man. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to automatically believe anonymous people coming forward, especially having been in the entertainment industry my whole life and knowing how manipulative and narcissistic some people oh in this God. industry this can be. Is, some people I think, in this I think there's a real teaching be. moment here because I, and I, I don't know Russell Brown, I've never met him, but he has admitted to have slept with thousands of women. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where the issue is because if you are a man or woman, but I was speaking the case of Russell Brown, and you have been intimate with thousands of women, it's not difficult to find a handful of women that have felt they've had a negative, disrespectful We're experience We're talking about an you. allegation of rape. We're no, talking but, about but, four can women can with allegations of rape. I'm, I'm, I'm not no, talking about, I'm just all, saying in they general. All no, no. They they're they're not all, I think it's one allegation of rape. When you act like a promiscuous degenerate, it does, it, it, it's not surprising that at some point allegations of sexual abuse. Well, Ava, what about, yeah, I mean, yeah. what about the wider point. issue here, which is that um, they're all anonymous, these accusers. Brand's obviously been named. His name is currently, you know, going through the mincer, um, front page of every paper for the worst possible allegations. Is it right that his accusers should retain anonymity? I think we can all say that it's been an absolute sewer over social media for the past couple of days. And yeah. can you imagine but only aimed at him. But can you imagine the danger that those women would have been put in? And mm. you've also got to think about the financial difference between these two people, OK? Russell Brand is the product of, you know, Hollywood films, big TV shows. He's got money behind what him. What about his he pregnant wife? He can protect wife? himself. What about his children? Wife? What about the woman that what he allegedly raped? Right. Allegedly. We don't know. He is innocent Why until proven, proven guilty. To, that is his to defend human someone right. you don't really because know. Because he has a against right. Against allegations right. you don't know. Well, to be right. fair, she knows him better than you guys, right? And he has a right to uh, the assumption of innocence. At the end yeah. of the day, listen, I don't know this man. I have never... I'm not interested in any of his work or any of that. But there are wider implications of assuming his guilt. And we're already seeing what's happening to his career as a result of it. I know you may not feel sympathy because you, you automatically assume that these women are right. Fine. But the, the bigger point is, here, we don't have a right to make that judgment. And by going to the media instead of the police, I'm very skeptical of these women because they chose to remain... Well, hang on. Look, again, look, let me play devil's anonymous. advocate again. I think that it is highly likely they will now go to the police. Well, I, so, I have to see it to believe it. I mean, let's wait and see. It's also yeah. possible that other women, as I believe the Times have now been saying, other women are coming forward whose stories will also have to be investigated. So we don't really know... We're at a very early stage of this. They dropped this massive bombshell. Yeah. But it is interesting to me that all the accusers remain anonymous. So, so whatever happens, if their stories end up in some way being disproven by Russell Brand, mm -hmm. their names never come out, mm -hmm. whereas his name is now completely destroyed by this, whatever happens.
I just don't, I just think that's a, I, there's no way that you could have put those women's names into the newspapers this weekend. They would have been heckled and to, to high hell. It would have been awful for them. You just can't. But I remember I Rose McGowan, for example, going public about Harvey Weinstein. And look what happened to her. Well, yes, but I interviewed her, but she, and she was incredibly courageous and she did get a lot of, you know, terrible fallout from it. But by being, I think, going on the record, it did help to incarcerate him. Mm -hmm. He'll never come out of prison, almost. Yeah. Highly, yeah, probably yeah. because of what she said. But then I would argue that if these these women had gone to the police first, the police would have said these are historical incidents. You can't actually prove them in a court of law, and they would have biffed them out the door anyway. So, and then we would be. Which is here. also possible. I mean, well, that, that is that's, possible. That's, that's and then if we were sitting here around this, this panel and we've that's been why it's important to encourage women to speak out. I don't like this sort of you know t innocent wallflower approach we have to women actually reporting to the police because it's not just about them. It's also about protecting other women. I, I'm sorry. I've had friends who've been raped, and I said this is bigger than you because this person can go. Go and do this to other women. It's about having something on the record, right? The, one of the mm. victims went to a rape crisis center, but she didn't call 911 to report it. Meanwhile, she had evidence at the time it happened, allegedly, and she could have gone to the police and it would have been on the record. Imagine if other women had had Can that. Can we courage. not have a, a, this a, is a why little we need sliver to change of compassion, though, that for perhaps if something that serious happens to you, the last thing you want to do is phone well, up LAPD have and have two and men you round have, your you house. You cannot have it both ways. Investigating. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot choose to be quiet and then 10 years later, oh, by the way, I was me three. I'm just so asking here, here for a is my story slither of time. compassion for the women. I have a slither of compassion, but guess what? I also have a slither of compassion for the alleged victims who were not protected because these women didn't go to the police. It, yeah. Actions have consequences. I'm yeah. sorry, and we need to tell women. I mean, that is that is a, a valid point, isn't it? Yeah, if you I, don't if you don't go to the police, you're endangering actually, other people. Actually, in a way, you're allowing a rapist, if that's indeed what Russell Brand turns then out the, to be, police... you're allowing that person to continue doing what they're doing. The police in this country need to clean up their act then, because if you're going to turn up at a police centre and they're going to throw well, your evidence... In the Can I just finish the point? This if you're going to throw US. like someone's evidence in a fridge that doesn't work and you're going to have to speak to Bill in Bolton, who doesn't really care, or someone potentially like Wayne Cousins in the Met, there is no incentive for a woman to go that to the That is right. not my experience. I have, I have been raped and I did go to the police the first time. And it, I had to go take the swabs. I had to do all of that stuff. Um, it, it wasn't a horrible experience going to the police. The man was arrested. What happened to that man? Well, he said that I consented. So that was it. It went to the Crown Prosecution Service mm. and they said, well, it will be your word against his in court. It's not that we don't believe you, but we've now got this on record if he does it to anyone else. So that Thank kind you. of backs up your point. Right. It was hard yeah. to do that. Okay. But I, I never thought once that, oh, I want to go to the press. Why would I want to put myself in such an unsafe environment? Yes, believe women in, in a therapeutic setting, in a personal setting, but you can't just go into the mass media and and expect to be believed. Well, I would, I would say again, I'd come back to Harvey Weinstein, uh, not somebody else I knew well, and he was taken down by women who went to the media, mm -hmm. by journalists from the New York Times and by Ronan Farrow and others who were involved in that. It was journalists that, that took down Harvey Weinstein. So you know, journalism can be a very powerful tool in holding powerful people to account.